Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the month of fasting or Ramadan, and we are here at All Saints Church with Reverend Bacon, who uh, is a great friend of the Muslim community, and who has, in fact, fasted with us on during several Ramadan. Talking of fasting, um, first of all, let's look at fasting from the uh, perspective of other religions and how do they see fasting as and maybe you can comment on that. Uh, one of the beauties of fasting is that fasting is a spiritual discipline of all the world's wisdom traditions. Christianity along with Islam, along with Judaism, and, and, and. So fasting is at the core of what all world religions hold in common. It is a moment of um, interfaith meeting. It is at the core of going deep into our spirituality, as well as having a deep sense of God consciousness or God awareness. Fasting is not just about avoiding food. It definitely has a moral and social sort of consequence. Can we reflect on that together? Well, for us, uh, Muslims as well as Christians, you really can't separate the moral and social dimension from the spiritual dimension. It is all caught up into one. Mm -hmm. And so you really cannot be a spiritual person without struggling with your social conscience and social awareness and responsibility. The beautiful thing about fasting for me and I think for you and others is that uh, fasting always raises the issue of our relationship with others as well as our relationship with God, as well as our relationship with our own choices as individuals, as persons who are exercising a freedom of choice that we were given by our Creator. Yes, and, and, and the, the aspect of fasting in which you discipline yourself in certain ways of, of uh, avoiding the excesses uh, perhaps needs your reflection also on that. Well, the heart of fasting for me is that moment when you are hungry or when you're thirsty. And rather than automatically reach for some food or drink because of the discipline that you're in, be it in Ramadan or the Christian fasting season is Lent, um, we are called to stop. And in that moment of stopping and thinking, that is an intrinsically sacred moment to stop and have self-awareness, awareness of why you're hungry, why you're thirsty, why you're fasting. It is a, a great moment to, to, to stop. It, it really is intrinsically sacred to simply stop and ask yourself, uh, why you're doing this. How is uh, that different from Christian traditions? Well, the Christian tradition of Lent is to fast from in order to make an openness for. And so it is up to the individual Christian to make a choice about what his or her discipline of fasting is going to be from year to year. So rather than there being a prescribed fasting from sexual relations, food and drink, and fasting from sunup to sundown, the Christian is given, given a much more um, license to make a choice about what she or he would fast from. In, uh, in, a, in Ramadan, Muslims fast from pre-dawn to sunset. In Christianity, or Christian way of fasting, is there a time limit? Or? There's not a time limit. Okay. Uh, Lent is generally six weeks long mm -hmm. in length. It does not include Sundays um, because Sunday for the Christian tradition is a celebration of the resurrection and so cannot be counted as one of the days of Lent or days in Lent. And so um, it truly is up to the individual to decide then on Monday through Saturday what she and he will fast from and for how long. Now, there are Christians who fast from certain substances or certain habits, and they keep that fast 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entirety of Lent. It's less rigorous than actually doing without food and drink and uh, sexual um, 
pleasures and intercourse. I, I would like to point out that during my days in Boston when I was training, I, I have gone through this period of Lent and, and eating fish till, <laughs> till there was I thought there would be no more fish left in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, so that is uh, uh, that practice of, of disciplining yourself yes. uh, on both sides to the extent that you understand uh, the excesses that you are committing yes. and your relationship with, uh, with uh, you cl cleaning your relationship with God and His creation is the, is the purpose of fasting. It is the purpose of fasting. Yeah. And what we do during Lent and the Christian fasting is to have in mind the fast of Jesus in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, as you well know, um, uh, in terms of religious symbolism, 40 is the symbol of maturity. Mm -hmm. And so 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, um, that is very significant for us. So the idea is that we are not fasting alone, but we are fasting with Christ in the wilderness as he prepared for his testing prior to going into ministry. So there is a, a, a sense of the cleansing of one's relationship with God as also one's relationship with others, also one's relationship with self, because mm -hmm. this took place historically with Jesus mm -hmm. right after he had been baptized and had received this epiphany that he was the beloved. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that we also fast mm -hmm. to remember that we are the beloved. Mm -hmm. So there's really a triangle of relationships here, one with oneself, one with the others, mm -hmm. all of our sisters and brothers on the planet and the planet itself, and also our relationship mm -hmm. with God. Well, c continuing on the theme of 40, I, I would also like to just share the information here, but you probably know that it was the 40th year of Prophet's life that he first received the revelation of the Quran, Prophet Muhammad. And that's, that thrills me because it once again reminds us that we are all one, that all of our religions are coming out of this common resource of truth and refreshment and compassion and revelation. And for the Prophet Muhammad um, to do that in his 40th year, that is so resonant and so harmonious with everything we know in the Christian Bible, being scripture from Hebrew scriptures as well as Christian scriptures, of the importance of the 40th year. It's beautiful, beautiful. Once again, thank you very much, Reverend Bacon. It's always a source of great pleasure and this indeed has has made my Ramadan even better. Thank you. Very good. You're very welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Meher, you and I have been traveling this road for almost 40 years. Now it's time slightly more, probably more. Yes, yeah. uh, I think what we need to do here is to look back and see what has been achieved, and then come to what we need to do more. So yeah. let's see. Uh, how do you see uh, the whole community at this point, from where we were to where we are now? Yeah, I think uh, there has been progress. The only thing that I am lamenting a little bit, it should have been more and faster. Because the world does not wait for us. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are progressing, but our pace of, pro of progress should be much faster than that. And uh, I was hoping that over 40 years, the amount of change that you and I and similar people, people have been trying to create should have reached a higher threshold mm -hmm. than what we have now. No, but then when you say more and faster, uh, how do, uh, what do you think was lacking and what do you think could have been done differently? Well, uh, let me talk about the community because we really were, it was 
I'm, I'm not arrogant, but it was clear, very clear in our mind what we want to do. But the community, it took a long time of experimentation and of doubts and sometimes of sluggishness mm -hmm. to take the steps towards progress. Mm -hmm. Case at point, of course, because me and you worked on that early on in the idea is of American Muslim identity. While it was very clear in our mind that this is the only solution, an immigrant community from all over the world can have and survive, yet uh, people say it for long, doubting the idea. And you, you are very aware of you are trying to Americanize Islam. You are trying to create another Islam for America and that uh, uh, you are cutting your relationship with the Ummah of Islam. Uh, these uh, questions, which are of course uh, are not backed by anything, it is just an anxiety, took a long time for uh, the community to come to reality. So the, that's the community aspect of it. I'll try to explore that a little further, but uh, from the leadership point of view, uh, as you see the leadership in the American Muslim community uh, evolving over this period of time of the last five decades, uh, would you not agree that sometimes the leadership itself uh, and its orientation was uh, not appropriate to uh, uh, to the to the times and the place we were. Uh, I mean, I'm yeah. going to quickly point out that initially, the first few years that I uh, uh, experienced here in this country during my residency, and uh, the talk was about Islamicizing. Yeah. And there was so much focus and so much energy spent in the concept of Islamicizing America. Yeah. And now uh, the whole paradigm has to Americanize Islam. Yeah. So would you not see that that was also a leadership problem uh, in the beginning? Uh, of course it was. And uh, we have been inflicted by an idea of what leadership is. We thought that leadership is to reflect the will of people, which is not leadership. Uh, this is, uh, call it uh, parliament election, call it popularity context, etc. But the leadership should pioneer the change, should be daring, mm. should be ready to, to reach the unreachable star, mm -hmm. and should be ready to carry and to pay the consequences of that. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, this was not the culture. The culture is wh what can you say which is not wrong but will cap capture the fascination and the admiration of the people. Uh, so you find yourself saying things that if you just uh, probe a little bit, they are unrealistic, will not happen, and just uh, feeding into the the pool of frustrations that the people have. Of course, I'm talking general, not all of them like that, but I'm talking about the general color of things the way they were. جنه وهزم الأحزاب وحده 
لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين وله كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, I declare that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his final messenger. Dear respected brothers and sisters, elders and youth, and for those of you who may not be of the Muslim faith, I greet you with the universal Islamic greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of God be with you. I wish you all Eid Mubarak on this auspicious occasion. We have been blessed with the holy month of Ramadan and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all of our prayers and good deeds that will weigh heavy for us in the hereafter and we live in peace, prosperity and with good health to see next Ramadan insha'Allah. Ameen. I want to um, thank you all for uh, the acts of charity and your kindness shown to uh, people throughout the county but particularly to Anaheim. You know Anaheim we we are a city of kindness that is who we are and uh, in fact this year we call it the year of kindness and kindness is not just kindness is not just being nice it's doing something for others and that's what uh, that's what this is all about, and I know that's what uh, your last 30 days is all about. You know, Anaheim is one of the most diverse cities in the United States, one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the United States. And what holds it together, what makes it one, is I believe the glue that holds us all together is kindness. And with that, he said, I know this was to be short. I want to welcome you all to Anaheim. Uh, enjoy yourself and uh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, so nice to see you all. InshaAllah, in a few moments we'll start the prayer. Uh, this is a prayer to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And turn your attention to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Musta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen Sirat Al-Ladina Na'bita Alayhim I wish you a very happy Eid to you and to your families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless your families. May Allah accept our fast, our prayers, our charities, and all our good deeds that we did, especially in the month of Ramadan. And may Allah bless us to continue doing good deeds always. May he bless us with his love, with his mercy and bounties here in this world and in the hereafter. It is so nice to see you. Alhamdulillah, all of you gathered here in such a large number. We are especially thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that our two major Islamic centers in this area, Islamic Center of Irvine and Islamic Society of Orange County, are together in this prayer. So we welcome you, all of you, mashallah. May Allah bless this uh, gathering. May Allah bless subhanahu wa ta'ala this uh, coming together. And I hope one day all the Islamic centers of Orange County, maybe 100,000 Muslims gather together, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Congratulations to everyone on Eid al-Fitr, on the completion of the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our deeds and our charities and our prayers. Ameen. I have two very quick reminders on this special day of Eid. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says after He discusses Ramadan in the Qur'an, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ He says, so that you may glorify Allah for that which He has guided you to, and so that you may be thankful. Alhamdulillah, we had a wonderful showing of, uh, I would say, maybe about 20, 22,000 people. Uh, and it was a great showing because everybody showed up on time and very, very few people made it for the second prayer. That goes to show you with the joint uh, participation of the masajids and the wonderful work that we did together, making sure that our people knew exactly what the instructions were. So that was a collaborative effort, and I'm really, really proud of both of the organizations and the volunteer force, the leadership, and of course, Dr. Siddiqui and Sheikh Jamal Diwan for being here and providing that religious leadership as well. Alhamdulillah, we started the prayer at 9 o'clock and um, we really filled the hall to maximum capacity. Uh, we did leave some egress space on the side, which could have been utilized for prayer space, but I think due to the number of people that we estimate attended today was at least 20,000 in the first prayer, and at least we estimate at least 1,500 to 2,000 people more in the second prayer. Um, Alhamdulillah, it looks like everything went very smoothly. We had the first prayer was led by Dr. Muzammil Siddiqui of the Islamic Society of Orange County, and the smaller second prayer was led by Sheikh Jamal Diwan from the Islamic Center of Irvine. Uh, mashallah, you know, it's a beautiful experience to, you know, be part of something greater than yourself and especially after Ramadan, um, you know, to, to feel that you're a part of a larger community and, um, you know, to uh, be proud of, you know, being Muslim. And, you know, of course, when you see such a big gathering, it's always inspiring. And it's nice to see the whole community come out with different backgrounds, different ethnicities. And I think that this is part of the beauty of Islam. We actually had uh, the mayor of Anaheim, um, Mayor Tom Tate, who actually personally came to the um, Eid prayer today. Uh, before we started the prayer, he came up on stage. He was formally introduced by myself. And he gave a, a greeting to the Muslim community uh, here at the prayer. Basic message I want to read that people should remain connected to their masajid and to their community. So be very much involved in your community. Make your community strong and good, united, working together, and enjoy the diversity of our community. People of different background are together, even different masajid together. We have to be together. We have to be, have tolerance for each other, work with each other. And the second thing is that we should be involved in our society, in which the society at large. We should be much more involved in civic matters, helping our neighborhood, our cities, and trying to see how we can improve everybody. MashaAllah, you know, it's so great to see so many people from both uh, the Islamic Society of Orange County and the Islamic Center of Irvine come together in one location and uh, have the Eid Salah together. It's a really great feeling to see just, you know, seas of people, alhamdulillah, at the center. Alhamdulillah, it's a wonderful feeling on so many levels. First of all, of course, it's the end of Ramadan. It's a big accomplishment for the community to, to finish this month of fasting and prayer and come together and commemorate Eid al-Fitr. But also because the two masajid, the two, the two Islamic centers came together, Islamic Society of Orange County, Islamic Center of Irvine, in the spirit of collaboration. The, the beauty of that is that, you know, you have all this, each, each masjid brings something to the table, you know, like you have your, your experiences and your talents and your resources and when you pull them together then it's just amazing how how much we can do when we work together. This is a, a great thing you know we have all of the 
massages come together uh, in one large, uh, you know, Eid prayer. It's something that we do look forward to uh, continuing uh, in the years to come. Eid Mubarak to everybody. Uh, the Muslim community has so much to be proud of, and American Muslims growing up here with uh, raising our children here, we have so much to, to, to instill in them, so much that they need to be proud of, of their Islamic identity. And when it's gatherings like this that really help bolster that spirit. Alhamdulillah.